In October of 2020, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith published the letter Samaritanus Bonus about the care of persons in critical and terminal phases of life. Just two years after this document, the proposal of palliative care as an alternative to euthanasia is gaining more and more of a consensus in the international medical landscape. A clear example of this tendency is the case of the World Medical Association, which includes a permanent representative of the Holy See in its meetings. The Holy See has been participating in the meetings of the World Medical Association since the late 1980s, when the association asked the Holy See to have a representative, always a doctor, especially because of the quantity of documents of ethical nature that are discussed, knowing that the Church and the Vatican have always had a great moral tradition, and for this they asked that there be a representative. On the topic of the end of life, the World Medical Association has published numerous documents. The last and most important was a revision of the Venice Declaration, approved in October of this year. In this text, there are clear indications about ethically appropriate medical activity at the end of life. In that document, it's insisted upon how medicine can have an appropriate response to suffering and the end of life as opposed to those who propose euthanasia, which for the association has never been a part of medicine, but would be in some way something contrary to medicine from its very origins, from the time of Hippocrates, who in the famous oath says, I will not give poison to anyone though asked to do so. The doctor has always seen his function as being to cure, and if you can't cure, you can alleviate pain and accompany the patient until the end. The World Medical Association was founded on September the 18th, 1947. Its mission is to ensure the independence of doctors and offer the highest levels of ethical conduct and medical attention. It currently has 115 member countries. Independent of the culture and tradition of each of the member countries, the majority of the medical associations defend the right to life and oppose the legalization of euthanasia in their respective countries. Beyond the devastating anthropological consequences of accepting the so-called right to die, we also find in the affirmation of this right the gravest of consequences from the legal point of view. In the Italian legal system, every right has a counterposition in a duty. The moment I must recognize the right to die, it means that a duty to be killed or a duty to kill exists. This would be a grave statement from the legal point of view because it would mean that at a certain point citizens, to be good and noble citizens, must act out that duty or right to suicide, or worse yet, the state would find itself in the situation of having to execute the duty of taking an individual's life. This isn't far from these situations. Think of the people who are alone. Think of the elderly. Think of the people who don't want to feel like a dead weight for their relatives, for the community, for society. You would almost feel it a duty to die, to take this weight off for the natural and correct development of others. Per il naturale sviluppo e per il corretto sviluppo degli altri. Today, our legal system is insinuating a practice known as informed consent. This norm seeks balance between the therapeutic autonomy of the patient and the paternalism of the doctor, who may decide without taking the opinion of the sick person into account. In addition to the procedural and technical limits of informed consent, its improper use could be added to it. Ma questo consenso informato, che addirittura arriva... This informed consent that has even arrived at the point of having life as the object is born of a principle that today goes higher that is the self-determination of the person. That is, I am able to decide myself and I decide based on how I feel, what quality of life I perceive in that moment. In doing this, what is lost is the therapeutic alliance. So, the therapeutic self-determination that I think of being alone in making a decision with respect to a sickness in reality should become a therapeutic alliance because I am not alone, but I have a doctor, a health structure, my friends, my relatives, the entire state that helped me 
to confront this moment of weakness. The therapeutic alliance becomes a moment of synthesis between that which is the cure proposed by the doctor, what in theory can be done, and that which the patient requires in practice. E quello che il paziente richiede nella pratica. With the letter Samaritanus Bonus, the Holy See insists on promoting palliative medicine as an adequate response for the end of life and invites understanding death as one of the crucial moments of the life of every person.